normally when I do my field tests, I take a lot of photos and I write a lot of um, captions, but I thought I would try doing my field tests a little differently in a couple of ways. For one, I'm going to try recording it for you guys. And secondly, I'm not just testing one marker, I'm testing two types of water-based slash watercolor markers. I am field testing Recollection, Recollections Masterpiece 2 markers from Michaels and Brilliant Brush Washable Markers from The Paper Source. The reason I'm doing it this way is um, the Recollection set are all very light pastels as you can see from this swatch here. Very, very light colors. Um, and the Brilliant Brush are all bright primaries. There's no skin tone. So um, rather than spending a lot of time creating two field tests and um, executing two field tests, I thought I would just do them both on the same one and um, keep my posts, I mean, keep my notes kind of separated. So I guess what I'm going to do is, um, gee, the way I would do it naturally is just work between the two sets. Um, I am kind of tempted to use all the colors I can from one set and then switch to the other, but that doesn't really, that doesn't really jive very well with me. Um, that sound, that feels like a big pain in the butt. So I think I might, ah, my chair is on my pant leg. Um, I think I might just um, work between the two. And I'm going to have my swatch sheet on the side of me. You, you probably can't see it, actually. I'm pretty sure you can't see it. Let's see if that helps any. That's a little bit better, because I like to work from swatch reference when I'm still unfamiliar with a product's color range. Um, you can view the full post for both of these products on my blog. They're not up yet but I'm going to correct this video to have annotations that link to both posts when they are up. So, um, I guess I'm going to get started. So I've already run into a problem where um, my swatch colors are not what is coming out of the marker. Um, I'm going to zoom in for you guys to be able to see this better, but this is, this is Tutu. And Tutu is very pink, but it looks very skin tone on my swatch paper, which is the same paper that I'm doing this test on, but it is very pink on the field test, which is pretty frustrating. Uh, um, I mean, it, the color is a little more accurate to the cap, so that's good. Um, it's just not the color it's swatched. So uh, that's, that's a problem already. It's also very hard to fill large uh, areas of color without streaking. Um, my guy could allow this to fully dry and then go over it again and that might be okay. But up here there's already some paper pilling, so I'm a little hesitant to try that. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, um, while the paper source brilliant brush brush pins are a, nicer to work with, uh, less prone to streaking than the Recollections Masterpiece 2, I've noticed that even though I've only really used the brilliant brush to apply that little bit of color, my brush is starting to get worn down and broken in. It's becoming mushy. Um, and this is a, a problem because <laughs> Well, it's a problem for a lot of reasons. Like right now, it's actually starting to fray on the paper and it's starting to tear up the paper. Um, neither of these brands are really um, very good water-based markers. Uh, I mean, I am assuming your intended application is a dry application on paper in in an adult coloring book, or, uh, I'm sorry, a coloring book aimed at adults, or um, maybe it's to, because you're an illustrator and you want a non-toxic alternative to um, alcohol-based markers, or maybe you're a stamper, and these might actually work okay if you're a stamper. Um, I'm not a stamper and I don't have the tools to test that, so you'll have to, <laughs> you'll have to look elsewhere for that. But these are not really good if you're an illustrator. They're very cute markers. Um, I have a feeling the Recollections Masterpiece 2 is trying to be a lot like the Marvy LaPlume. Uh, yeah, the Marvy LaPlume. I want to say 2? Which is their water... They have a... They have, they have, Marvy has a very interesting naming scheme that's very similar to Neo Pico. Neo Pico in that... Um, Rather than giving their products brand new names, they add numbers to signify their use. So, um, one of the Marvy products is water, our water-based markers that are intended to be used like watercolor markers. So they're intended to be used like um, Tombow ABTs or Zig Art and Graphic Twins. Um, and I've reviewed those. And the others are um, alcohol-based markers single tip alcohol based markers like so they're meant to be used like Neo Picos or Copics or Prismacolors. <laughs> but yeah, a breaking a broken in brush that has no give. I mean it didn't have much give for the start. The the brilliant brushes are have a little more ink or better ink flow than the Masterpiece 2s. So they are less prone to just streaking like this and destroying your paper by causing it to pill but uh, they're still they're still not great they're not really fun to work with uh, and I'm using pace on marker paper it's from my Walmart review uh, since I had a pad I figured I might as since I had purchased a pad I figured I might as well use it for a lot of my uh, basic dry application water test, I mean, uh, the water based marker test, sorry. So I used it for um, the up and up marker test, I used it for these, I used it for the Crayola marker test. I think I even did um, a Copic illustration on it, but that was more to test the paper than to test um, the Copics. And it's not, it's fun to ink on, it's like a nice paper to ink on, but it's not a good not a good marker paper by it's not even good for Copics it's just not good marker paper which is funny because Payson is made by Strat well they're under the same umbrella company as Strathmore and I like a lot of Strathmore products a lot so it's a little and it's I mean I got it at Walmart and I have a feeling this is like very much student grade but like because the paper is very not receptive to what I'm doing, it, it, the work looks student grade, even though I know how to do a good job. 
that's that's always that's always frustrating. It's been kind of the bane of my of my like affordable grade so art supplies run is like every a lot of the products I've tested for this um, they just don't perform nearly as well as their more expensive art store counterparts and the work looks shoddier and I just I feel really bad because I when I was a teenager we had art supply stores and I got to go there sometimes um, they were like a 40 minute drive from my house but we had a Walmart so most of my supplies were bought from Walmart uh, and most every everything I, I tried to do was colored by these experiences of using subpar materials and trying to make the most out of them and I didn't have the ability or the knowledge to kind of compensate for the product's shortcomings so I, I feel really bad for kids and, and teenagers or just people in general who are kind of limited to uh, Walmart grade art supplies or for example this example recollections stamping brushes because for whatever reason they cannot or will not or are not comfortable ordering supplies online and then I mean I understand that too because and that's a lot of trust and if you're just getting started you're more likely to pick up and mess around with something that you can buy one at a time open stock um, low investment because you don't have to buy the whole thing at one time I mean with these you do but I'm sorry the recollections and the brilliant brush you do but uh, you're not paying for shipping in addition to paying for the product ah, I'm not really into these It's kind of a shame because I really liked this illustration before I started coloring it with these. And Tutu's actually dried to an, a slightly nicer, more skin tony color than what it went down at. I was like really kind of nervous about it. The Recollections brushes are holding up a little bit better than the Brilliant brush. And I, so I didn't demonstrate this, the, the Recollection brush markers are twin tipped and brilliant brush are they have a single tip and I have lots I have lots of close-up pictures in the blog post that these belong to it's got oh I'm sorry the recollections has this tiny little fine liner that I I'm sure it's fine for adding details and I might I might try it out but I, oh, I hate those things the the pigment or and the dye usually comes out darker on that side it's just like they're never done well. And I mean, I should probably, I should strongly consider doing a watercolor test with these, but um, when I, I did initial swatches, they performed really poorly. So I probably won't. I just, I just don't have the energy if I know something is gonna fail. In, in regards to art supplies based on prior experiences, I just don't want to put the time in beyond swatching to see it fail. I feel like you guys can probably, you guys are smart, you guys can, can get the gist. And I'm sorry about the shadows. Uh, my recording setup has gotten a lot better lately but it's still I, I need more light sources in the studio which is actually the topic of an upcoming blog post because I have some LED track light kind of things that are going to be installed soon and I'm excited about that because the apartment I have doesn't have any overhead lighting in in the bedrooms and my studio is just one of the two bedrooms um, which I, like how do you not have overhead lighting I I don't understand but okay, it doesn't. It also doesn't have ceiling fans, which I'm from Louisiana. You don't not have ceiling fans. You'll die in the summer. But this, I mean, and this is Tennessee, so I know they know better. I know other, and I've been to other places that have ceiling fans. This is not, it's not like they just don't know. They know, they're just not here.
And these can blend a little bit, but um, I'm just, I know it'll tear up the paper because in my initial test, it tore up the paper. And you know, given the fact that, that the recollections markers are trying to be Marvy Laplume, I feel like they are pretty on point because Mar Marvy Laplume are kind of dry and their fine nib is kind of mediocre and they're not really the best. Uh, they're actually watercolor markers, although they're currently being marketed as stamping markers because I think they just can't compete with um, the favorite, which is Tombow APT. And Tombows are good, but I honestly, I prefer the Zig Art and Graphic Twin to the Tombow ABT markers. They're a little harder to find. And um, I kind of got, I, I, I started testing water-based, not watercolor, but water-based markers because my mom enjoys doing coloring books and I wanted to, I'm kind of like an art supply pusher. I wanted to be able to find like great, good markers that are fun to use for her even though she's really quite happy with her Crayola super tips, which are actually fine markers. Um, I don't know, I guess I got too big for my britches. I'm always trying to like push art supplies onto people. I like them myself, so I guess I think other people should like them. They're like, they're toys with potential. You know, you never know when, for me, it's about, I never know when something new I try is going to just really open up my world. Like, I've started using toned tan paper, and I like it a lot. Um, it's fun to use all kinds of stuff on. I particularly like noodling around with um, Winsor Newton pigment markers on it because some of them are opaque and that really pops out on the paper. Not all of them are opaque though, and uh, I'm, I haven't looked too closely, but I'm pretty sure they don't say how transparent they are, otherwise I would strongly consider just buying a bunch of the opaque ones because I really like that. Um, and there's, I'm going to have a post on that coming up soon. I'm actually waiting on some paper to come in that Winsor Newton is working on that is specifically designed for these markers. But that's not what y'all are watching for. Y'all are watching for these. Which I'm not really feeling. And you can hardly, I'm sorry. It's like a toss up between you guys seeing the markers and you guys seeing what I'm doing. So, um, these would probably perform better on a heavier paper, so maybe, um, like a wood pulp based, um, cold press, or honestly, honestly, probably hot press, something with a smooth surface, but the ability to take water, uh, watercolor papers, or even mixed media paper, they might perform a little bit better on just because those are sturdier papers, this pace on watercolor paper is actually pretty thin. And I'm sorry, it's not watercolor, it's uh, marker paper, but it's still pretty thin. Okay, so here's my verdict. Uh, a set of the Recollections stamp markers, uh, yeah, stamping markers, they're, they're pretty comparable to uh, Marvy Le Plumes if you find them in person and they're on sale. I think Jerry's is getting rid of their Marvies right now, so um, that might be something to look into. I think they would actually be cheaper than these. Um, 
For what I do, which is illustration that focuses on rendering the human figure, I would skip these. These brilliant brush markers from the marker source, um, they're not, these are not being marketed to artists. These were, I think they were like displayed with a couple adult coloring books. Um, they're probably fine for that, but they are not better than Crayola Super Tips, and they are certainly not cheaper, and your color selection is very limited. Although, the case is really, like, re a really good case. I really like the case these come in, and they're very cute. So if you're the sort of person, and I know there are people out there, I, I could easily be one of those people myself, who just, like, wants a really pretty desk, and likes having really cute supplies, but it's not important that they perform well, these are okay. They'll make your desk look pretty. They'll make you look like you're the cutest little artist. But I mean, if you're not interested in being the cutest little artist and you like supplies that perform well, I would skip both of these and I would get myself a set of the Zig Art and Graphic Twins or the Tombow ABTs or even the Marvy LaPlumes if you're looking for a water-based marker that can perform like a watercolor marker. So that's my test for, oh, that's my test for Recollections Masterpiece 2 and uh, wash, paper source washable brilliant brush markers. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Um, <laughs>